leaders today renewed their urgent calls for restraint, pleading with all sides involved to step back from the brink and to resume high-level negotiations. Meanwhile, tensions only seem to mount as Cloud Cuckoo Land President and Dictator Peter Tyrus issued an executive order Wednesday. The order will further extend construction on the network of screens that Avian Nation has used to interfere with the transmission of solar radiation to Earth. According to recent estimates by NASA, in just under six months, the birds have been able to construct a network of screens capable of absorbing more than 85% of the sunlight that usually reaches the planet's surface. This is Cloud Cuckoo Land spokesman and chief negotiator, Hugh Elbedes. Well, this is an economic situation. Economics is all about managing resources. I mean, the sun is Mother Earth's most precious resource. If it makes sense that humans control the oil under the ground, then why can't the birds have the light in the sky? I mean, it's the sky, man. They live up here. Tony Blair, envoy to Cloud Cuckoo Land from the coalition of the eight nuclear nations, the so-called nuclear octet, issued harsh criticism of the proposed construction and said that when it came to dealing with the giant screens, all options were on the table. This move to extend the coverage of the screens cannot stand. And yes, of course, when I say all options are on the table, I mean we will not hesitate to nuke the birds and their illegal giant screens back into the age of their dinosaur ancestors. If President Tyrus and the ministers of Cloud Cuckoo Land believe that when it comes to the question of our sunlight, we will not stand up for our basic human rights, then they are sadly mistaken. We are not, I repeat, not a bunch of chickens. It is they, I say, they who are the chickens. Since the initial phase of construction on the screens began six months ago, the avian nation of Cloud Cuckoo Land has generated a whopping $5.2 trillion in revenue from its sunlight transmission tax. The tax has been widely condemned and is regarded as illegal by most terrestrial industrialized nations. In December, President Bush announced the formation of an executive task force to look into solutions to what has been dubbed the bird initiated rate deviation crisis or the bird crisis for short. President Bush recently issued a statement to the press. We're engaged in a new kind of war, a war on feathers. Our enemy in this war is a different species of enemy. They fly in the sky. They eat seed. They live in small wooden houses, often elevated off of the ground. They're weird. And we cannot negotiate with this enemy, an enemy that hates our American way of life, who hates our freedom. Instead, we must confront them in the sky so that we don't have to confront them here on American ground. Today, the Associated Press is reporting that just last week, President Bush was briefed by Task Force Chairman Fred Ema on the viability of a tactical nuclear strike which would see the United States sending a pair of 50 megaton devices into the lower atmosphere in an effort to destroy the giant screens responsible for intercepting the majority of sunlight bound for the U.S. When asked last week about the possibility of a nuclear attack, Cloud Cuckoo Land President Peter Tyrus commented that Bush's rhetoric was, quote, the sign of a total bird brain. Tyrus went on to say, we don't want to kill anybody, man, so just chill out. We just want the birds to get what's rightfully theirs. The U.S. can afford it, so just pay up. Now for a look at sports. Here's Chet Chetterson 